Hey everyone, how's it going? I hope you're all doing well today and I hope you're all continuing to stay safe. So now that we've done the rankings of the ranged weapons, I feel it's only appropriate to move on to the melee weapons. And just as a disclaimer, this might be a little bit more controversial than the last one just because this is my preferred playstyle, so I tend to have stronger opinions on certain things. And there are maybe one or two weapons that I haven't had that much experience with, and I will outline them as we talk about them. But just keep in mind, this is all just opinion-based, and this is just for fun. This isn't serious. My word is not the final word of anything, as is the case with opinions in general. So if you like a weapon that I may not like, or if you don't like a weapon that I may like, then that's totally fine. But anyways, if you do enjoy this video and want to see more stuff like this, I am going to tackle the shields and skills later on. I also do Dead Cells Guides runs commentaries, and I do social commentaries on the side as well as play other games. So feel free to hit the subscribe button if you want to watch any of those things, and let's get started. So I'm going to tackle two right off the bat just to make sure that we don't have to talk about them afterwards, and that's the Rusty Sword and the Cursed Sword, and they're for different reasons. So the Rusty Sword is just your general starting weapon. I, it's hard to rank it, but I'll try to do it based off of its own context, such as when you're in 0 or 1 BC and you haven't unlocked the thing that lets you start off with random weapons. I do actually really like the Rusty Sword if you're just starting out with the game. Obviously on 4 and 5 BC it's not good, right? But when are you going to use it on 4 and 5 BC? So I think contextually speaking, I would actually give it a 6 or a 7 out of 10 because I really feel that it's a good enough starting weapon to be able to carry you through the first few biomes and then you get something else later on. So I'm actually a big fan of what they've done in terms of making that particular weapon good. I think it's much better than the beginner's bow if you pair that with the old wooden shield and I think you're set on 0 BC. The other one is the Cursed Sword and the reason I have a difficulty ranking it is because while it's powerful obviously it comes with the caveat that if you get hit just once unless you're in darkness you are going to die so it's hard to rank it but in terms of the weapon itself without that caveat behind it I would probably give it an 8 or a 9 but without that caveat it's really tough to say. I mean, I'm inclined to say one, but that's just because I don't like using the Cursed Sword. But, you know, why don't we just consider it unranked? We can't really rank it. But those two aside, let's talk about the more interesting weapons, which we have got, I want to say, let's open up this folder, 35 items to cover, a lot more than the ranged weapons. So we are going to start off with the Assassin's Dagger, and many of you did not like or agree with my blowgun ranking at a four and in hindsight maybe a four was not the right ranking for it maybe a five would have been better but i think the assassin's dagger is generally a lot better than the blowgun and the reason i feel that way is because of the fact that blowgun has the ammo problem and the fact that it's extremely weak when you face enemies head on while assassin's dagger does have that same problem of being weak when you're facing enemies head on it's fast enough to kind of mitigate that problem especially if you have synergy such as poison or bleed or burning oil or something like that so so it can handle things like giant and conjunctivity, it's just not as efficiently. But in addition, you don't have that ammo problem, so you can just phaser it up or use a smoke bomb or grappling hook or do whatever you need to do, and then just start firing off with the assassin's dagger from there. And I think because of the speed of the weapon, that actually makes it a lot better than the blowgun. So I think to start off with the assassin's dagger, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10 because of the fact that, yeah, yeah, it's not that great when you're facing enemies head on, but you can pair it with a lot of different things. I think it's both effective in brutality as well as tactics. I personally like it better in tactics because melee tactics is such a weird playstyle in that you have to get used to it and you're going to hate it at first, but the more and more you do it, you're going to end up loving it. So with the Sassus Dagger, I would again give it an 8 out of 10. Moving on, we have got the Balance Blade, which I personally am a huge fan of and no one else seems to be I'm just kidding, there's probably a lot of people that like this weapon, but I do see a lot of hate towards it just because of the fact that it's kind of weak, to be honest, but the thing about Balance Blade is that it's the reverse War Javelin in that it is not great in bonds, but it's absolutely fantastic against bosses. About a week or two ago, I posted a Balance Blade full run, it was a full commentary run, and I talked about how the Balance Blade was able to get me crits during boss battles and once I was able to get crits it just didn't stop from there because Balance Blade is the epitome of an ambush type of weapon especially when you get those crits going it's just unstoppable 
And if you pair it with something like Open Wounds, and that's going to be a theme throughout this, we're going to pair a lot of things with Open Wounds here. So if you pair it with Open Wounds, or if you get a Carbine and you have 80% to Poison, or again, Burning Oil, or Electricity, or literally any Dot Synergy associated with it, those first 10 hits when you're not getting crits are pretty strong for the most part, but once you start getting those crits, oh wow, it's awesome. I remember in that same run, I had a level 12 Burning Oil balance blade and i had a diff another synergy it might have been poison or something like that or it might have been bleed i can't exactly remember to be honest with you guys but with that run each critical hit was doing about 200,000 damage and think about how fast this weapon is 200,000 damage with that speed that melted every single boss and so balance blade because of those first 10 hits not being as strong and it's not a great weapon in the first two biomes you do have to knock it down a point but other than that once you get this thing rolling it's great so i would give it a 9 out of 10. blood sword is a much much improved weapon if this was 1.8 i would have put it in the b tier or i guess in this case i would have given it like a 6 or 7 out of 10 called it an average weapon and moved on because it's one of the first things that you're going to unlock that and spartan sandals are two of the first things that you're going to unlock in this game and so blood sword used to be slow and used to be weak but now with this new dot rework when you apply blood to an enemy, the bleeding stacks and after it gets to a certain amount, it either chops off a limb or it explodes. I don't exactly know what happens, but it does a lot of damage is all you need to know here. And with the improved speed of the uh, blood sword, it's gotten a lot more efficient and the blood stacks are consistent. Again, if you pair this with open wounds and you got a bloodthirsty shield, you can just be killing enemies all over the place with blood. So. I really am a big, big, big fan of this weapon. I do have a Blood Sword run. I plan on uploading. I don't know if I'm uploading it before this or after this. If I've uploaded it before this, feel free to check that out. If not, then feel free to watch it after. So, Blood Sword, that's our first 10 out of 10. I honestly don't have anything bad to say about it. Broadsword is the first of the melee survival weapons, and the melee survival thing is a bit wonky with me because there's some weapons I absolutely adore and love. This is one of them. There's some weapons I absolutely freaking hate, which we will talk about later. But Broadsword, I think, is such a powerful weapon. And one of the running themes with melee survival is that it's weak against bosses because of the boss damage cap, and the fact that you generally will have a tough time getting the full combo off. But the thing about Broadsword is that unlike the two-handed weapons, which I covered in the last video, you can run a shield with it. It pairs well with pretty much any type of shield that has a secondary affix, such as your cudgels of the world, your rampart, your parry shields, your bloodthirsty shields, and all of these different type of shields, you can pair it with the broadsword and it just fires off a lot of damage. And if you're on higher BCs, you're almost guaranteed to get something with the attack after parry does 300% damage and broadsword just does even better from there. The nice thing about the broadsword too is that you can go between platforms and you can parry in between and still have that combo. That's what makes it even better so that 300% just becomes absolutely fantastic. I actually think the best mutation of run with broadsword, if you have a shield with you, which most likely you will because it's survival, you typically want to take something like blind faith or something like spite or some sort of parry mutation. But my favorite is counter attack just because of the same thing I said earlier because if by chance you don't end up with that attack after parry does 300% or if you're on lower BCs, having counter attack with the shield absolutely makes this like a killing machine and that boss damage cap isn't that relevant anymore. So broadsword, I would actually give a 9.5 out of 10. The only reason I'm not giving it that 10 just because of the fact that it is tough to get off the combo against bosses and it doesn't work against every single boss in the game. So there's only knock against it, but 9.5 I think is perfectly good for this. Crowbar is... Oh, how do I put Crowbar? I, I don't know what to say about this one. Um, when it first came out, I would have given it like a 10 out of 10 because there were random boxes uh, scattered out throughout biomes and you didn't really need to break doors in, in order to get crits. And so you pretty much have crits for about 80% of the level. But they fixed that immediately in 1.8 once they realized how busted that was. And now so you can only get it when you break through doors. Now what's the big problem with the crowbar? Well, there's two huge problems with it. One is the obvious one, which is that there's not enough doors in the game. And so you really have to run this on, ta on tactics with an emergency door. The emergency door is not the best skill in the game because, yeah, you get a little bit of damage reduction. But at the same time, that slot for a skill could go towards something better like a lacerating aura or a flame turret or an owl or something. And it's, it's 
tough because you know you got to wait for those proper affixes to synergize with the crowbar it, it's not an easy thing to be able to do and while you're busy busy trying to break down the door a boss can hit you so it's terrible in that aspect the other thing is that its combo is really slow for a melee tactics weapon and so if you're running tactics this actually might be the worst melee tactics weapon out there because of the fact that it is so tough to get this going because of the weird combo that it has like that last hit in the combo is not good so i do think this would benefit from a speed buff kind of what they did with the blood sword if you make it slightly faster i think it can be better i think more opportunities to either break doors or maybe have the door do something else give it better affixes i don't really know what you do but crowbar i would give it three out of ten uh, we have this in alphabetical order, so Curse Sword's up next, we just talked about that, so Flashing Fans is up next, and Flashing Fans, again, it's just a weird weapon because it's actually pretty easy to get crits in this game, and I'll talk about where you can get crits from bosses and biomes, right? So, in biomes, all the projectile enemies and all the bomb enemies, so those are your hammers of the world, your inquisitors of the world, your arbiters, all of them, they drop bombs, right? And then you should be able to get them from there. In bosses, you can't do it in concierge, you can't do it in... You're, you cannot do it in Mama Tick unless she shoots the gunk at you. And that if you're running a melee build, why would she shoot gunk at you? Because you, she only does that if you're far away. So that's its own thing. Conjectivities you can do it for. Timekeeper you can do it for. Giant you can do it for. Hand of the King you can do it for. And the final 5DC boss you can do it for. So you can do it against every boss that's not named Concierge. So it is good in that respect. The problem is half of those bosses shoot multiple projectiles at once. And so, because the flashing fans is fairly slow-ish, you have trouble getting the parry timing down for the flashing fans on projectiles. But the other problem is that you have to parry multiple of these at once. So that's also the tricky thing. I would say against Hand of the King, it works better because the thing that he does is drop the bombs. And Final 5 BC also drops bombs, so you can get crits from there in a much more easier type of way, I would say. But it's also a big learning curve because this is not the same parry timing as a shield, right? Like you've got to actually hit the fan before the parry timing. I don't know if that makes sense. So like you can, you have enough time to parry a projectile right when it comes to you. The flashing fans, you have to do it at about a half second to a second before. That actually makes it a little bit tougher to use. And if there's other enemies around you and you're trying to parry with the flashing fans, that can be tough. So. This one's kind of tough to rank, but I would put it at a 5 because of the amount of difficulty that it takes. And even after you're able to get the crits, it does damage, but not as much as you would think because the combo's pretty slow. So I would give it a 5 out of 10. Not great, but not bad either. Flawless is a really good weapon because when you're not getting hit, it's a nice feeling to be able to get crits with this weapon. Now, when you're not getting hit, it's not as powerful, but it's not like the combo is slow. And I think this is one of the better melee survival weapons because of the fact that it's, it's for a melee survival weapon, extremely fast. I think it's the fastest one out there. So I, I really am a big fan of this one. And it also works in brutality quite nicely. So I think it's a versatile weapon can run in both uh, brutality and survival. The crit rate's great. Uh, it, so I don't have much else to say about it. I would give it a nine out of 10 just because of the fact that if you get hit, you're kind of in trouble, but at its peak, it's great. And now we go to the first melee survival weapon that I hate, which is the flint. I know the flint has its fans out there. I apologize, I am not one of them. The thing about the flint is it's slow, and it takes a long time to get that charge going. And yeah, you can spam the button, and it's a lot faster there, but... Oh, the mod management is weird with this one. You have to make use of jumping from platform to platform and holding it as you transition to platforms. That's a difficult concept to explain, but that's kind of what you have to do. So the mod management isn't terrible, but it's not great either. And against bosses, I I did a flint run. I actually completed a flint run. I didn't make it to this channel, but um, I, I had such a miserable time with it because it felt like it took for ever to get the bosses down and i had good synergy on it too i had the 80 percent of poison on it and it just took forever because of how slow it was so i don't like this one at all i would keep it at a 2 out of 10. now we've got the frantic sword and the frantic sword 
is a polarizing weapon i would say because a lot of people take it because they're not confident that they're going to be able to get hit and stuff like that and they're not going to be able to clear biomes easily so having a frantic sword is a really good option to have i think this works amazing in melee tactics actually because melee tactics one hit and you're down to like 50 percent anyways because you're up close and the chances of you getting hit are a lot harder and in brutality kind of just works like your standard melee weapon it's not the fastest thing in the world but it's still pretty fast i would say it's pretty good um, I don't really think that if you don't have crits, it's a bad weapon. I just think that if you have crits, it's really good. So there are a couple ways in which you can get the Frantic Sword going. I've covered this in the past in past runs, but uh, just as a quick refresher, there's a couple ways you can do this, right? So either you get to 50% malaise, so you can do that through taking a couple hits and taking some infected food, get yourself back up to, you know, a sizable HP amount, and then you can get crits for the rest of the time when you're there. The other thing you can do is take a bath in the Toxic Sewer's Poison or the Ancient Sewer's Poison and then you can get down to 50% pretty quickly or you just do the regular thing which is take a bunch of hits and then you should be fine. The other thing that you can do which is kind of weird is you take trap damage intentionally. It's the same idea as the Toxic thing in which you can manipulate your HP in order to get to that 50%. Generally, the melee strategy, the melee strategy is much more efficient just because of the fact that this will absolutely smoke enemies once you are able to get crits. I think it works really good against bosses too. I do suggest pairing this with the shield. It's because of the fact that if you're at 50% HP and you don't want to get hit even more, take a shield with you, you'll be fine. But otherwise, Frantic Sword is fantastic, honestly. And this is the other 10 out of 10 that I would give just because of the fact that it's not bad if you don't have crits, but it's very easy to get crits. Now, once you're able to do it, it's a high risk, high reward type of thing. And that is basically what defines my entire playstyle: high risk, high rewards. That's why I love melee tactics. So 10 out of 10 for this one too. Giant Killer, I don't like, but I don't hate it as much as the Flint. So I've had the opportunity to do a few runs with it. I feel in every run that I've done it with, by the way. And the thing about Giant Killer that I don't like is the fact that it is not good in biomes. So a strategy that people used before was using this with the heavy crossbow. You take that, use a heavy crossbow for biomes and for like normal enemies and Giant Killer, you would use it for the elites and for the bosses. This works in theory, except for the fact that Giant Killer is actually, it doesn't do as much damage as you might think against bosses because I think it works as a melee survival weapon that you take in the very last level and then you can just use it to cheese Hand of the King or the final 5 BC boss. You can use it for that. But the thing is, think about this in terms of a damage type of context, right? So if I have something such as the Blood Sword, which is, you know, it's fairly fast, but not the fastest thing in the world. It does a lot of damage and it can stack damage and it, you know, has its synergies going on with it. It actually does more damage than the Giant Killer does. In that same amount of time that you get the entire Giant Killer combo off, Blood Sword at its peak would have done more damage. So even if you synergize with the Giant Killer, because the thing is, is that it is so slow. The third and fourth hits are extremely slow. So even if you're able to get that combo off, it's not as powerful as you might think. And the other thing is, against bosses, when are you going to get that opportunity to be able to get all four hits off? Like, you really got to strategize if you're going to do that. You got to parry all over the place, you got to roll all over the place. At least with the broadsword, it's a simpler combo, and the second and third hits, they're slow, but not as slow as the giant killer one. So, it's a really, really difficult thing to be able to pull off. And I've actually not been able to do it since my initial 5BC win. Uh, those are my problems with it. I think what it does well is do quick damage against bosses if you're running a shield and two skills, like a crusher, wolf trap, and like a punishment shield. I think it does good for that extra bit of damage that the skills and shield may not be able to provide, but I think that its shortcomings far outweigh the good things that it does, but I do think it does certain things really well. So given that, I will actually give it a 4 out of 10, which may seem higher considering that I've spent the last two minutes bashing this, but I will give it a 4 out of 10 for that. Again, I know a lot of people like Giant Killer. I'm not one of those people, so I, I do apologize. Um, Hayabusa Boots. Um, a lot of people prefer the gauntlets over the boots. For me, I put them on the same level because of the fact that the boots are... They just work differently because they're a defensive melee weapon. They're defensive and offensive. They're kind of like the War Javelin. War Javelin has defensive and offensive utility. So do the Hayabusa boots. Whereas the defensive utility, you may ask, well, you have that fourth hit, which, you know, repels enemies all around you. That's the defense part right there. The offensive part is, you know, you're kicking enemies and you can 
yeet enemies off of platforms using that little wave of denial thing that it has. I think it's strong. I think it is fast. That's the important thing about weapons like this is that the base DPS is not great, but it's strong because it's easily synergizable with a lot of different things that such as the case with most fast melee weapons, if not all of them. And that wave thing is so useful in biomes. Like I cannot tell you how much, how many times I've gotten out of pickles because of the fact that the Hayabusa boots just got me out. I, I pr featured it prominently in my last normal mode win, which I think I posted about a week ago. You can check that out if you want. But I, Hayabusa boots, I absolutely love. I will say, because of that base DPS not necessarily being there and there's no crit condition behind it, I will give it a 9 out of 10, but otherwise it's great. Hayabusa Gauntlets has a similar problem as Hayabusa Boots in that the first several hits until you get to the 40% where you start getting hits from there aren't as powerful, but once you're able to get this thing rolling, it's great. It's fantastic. So this one's also 9 out of 10, by the way. Um, I would say it struggles not a lot against bosses, but you know, you gotta get them to 40%. And getting there is the challenge. It's not actually the 40% and under, because once you get them to 40% and you have your synergies rolling through either poison or bleed or something, now and then, then you, you're, they're done. <laughs> they're pretty much done. This completely bodies giant because the 40% thing occurs with the hands as well. So you'll be able to get down the hands very quickly. So I do like Hayabusa gauntlets. Uh, I do like them a lot, but the only knock is, you know, getting an enemy to 40% can be a challenge sometimes. Impaler has some struggles against bosses. That's kind of the running theme for a lot of weapons that I kind of rank low, but this is not something I'm going to rank low. Um, I think that it does struggle somewhat against bosses, but if you have the proper synergies, again, getting synergy and brutality is extremely easy, just as it is on tactics. So I, I do like Impaler a lot. I will say the one thing that it really has going for it is not the fact that you can push enemies towards walls and get crits from there, that's a really good thing, but the other thing that it does absolutely fantastically is that you can hit multiple enemies at once. You can hit up to like three or four enemies at once. If you have a bunch of small enemies in a row, like a bunch of rats and you have a rampager or a bunch of rats and an inquisitor, just keep firing off Impaler, you're gonna, get, you're gonna kill them all. Um, I will say the one boss it handles very nicely is Mama Tick because she's kind of stacked up against the wall and so you'll be able to get constant crits. I think the similar thing happens with Timekeeper where sometimes she'll be up against the wall so you can just keep hitting her. Uh, it works great with Spartan Sandals by the way. If you want to hit an enemy against the wall and then use the Impaler from there then you should be good to go. So Impaler I would give an 8 out of 10. Scythe Claws are a complicated weapon to talk about because of the fact that they were nerfed so I don't have as much experience with them, but I did have my problems when they were really strong too. And the problem was they were ungodly slow and the boss damage cap really would hurt this weapon. I remember there was a run where in 1.7, I had a million crit damage on my right side call. That was like the crit damage, but the boss damage cap is less than a million. So I wasn't doing the full amount of damage that I wanted to. And so again, this is one of those things where I feel like two-handed weapons are so impacted by the boss damage cap that I think it shouldn't there should be a mutation that like like I think doubles the boss damage cap. I think that I'm using the right words here or just eliminates it completely because two-handed weapons have such a difficult time because they're already slow and boss battles are even more of a chore so sides are still good they're great in biomes. They hit a lot of enemies at once, by the way. And they are great against flying enemies. The left side claw is good against flying enemies. I don't know if people realize that. Another problem with melee survival weapons, not good against flying enemies. Flawless is good against them, which is why I gave it a 9 out of 10. Broadsword's good against them, also a 9 out of 10. Uh, left side claw can also hit them. So I, I will give this one an 8 out of 10 because it does so many things really well. And I'm going to be a little bit generous towards these melee survival weapons just because of the fact that Pretty much all of them have the same problem against bosses, so I think it would just be too redundant and then all of them would rank too low, but I think sites, you know, they deserve to be at an 8. Meat Skewer is my favorite weapon of the game, so you guys know where this is going. Um, I think it is the best melee tactics weapon out there. I think it is one of the best melee brutality weapons out there. And think about early game, right? Because early game you don't have a lot of scrolls, especially in 1.9, right? So you're struggling to get off damage against enemies. It can be really tough to, you know, hit multiple enemies at once or get out of certain situations. But Meat Skewer does it all. You know, you 
have the iframes on the skewer portion of it like the first hit and you can get on the other side of enemies you can start doing crits when you're on the other side of enemies that makes it even better uh i think the legendary affix on this one is 15 percent damage to enemies hit in the back which is an absolutely crazy ability to have on this thing uh, i think it works great in both brutality and tactics with tactics predator is the is the uh mutation that you want to work with this on in brutality it would be open wounds just because you can skew on the first hit get the bleed and then you can get a bunch of hits off from there the other thing that this does really well is that you can actually skew through the backs of thornies and then hit them up front and you don't take any damage you can skew through tentacles when they're moving and then you're not going to take any damage overall just an absolutely phenomenal weapon i actually think this is the best melee weapon in the entire game right now um most of you are probably going to disagree with that that's fine it is my favorite weapon in the entire game so i'm giving it an easy 10 out of 10 for that nutcracker is a weapon that i say i hate all the time and then sometimes it works out amazingly well okay so here's where i hate it is when i don't have an opportunity to freeze stun or immobilize enemies hand of the king gets a brutal weapon to use i don't think i need to say much more than that because hand of the king cannot get stunned freezing hand of the king is tough because he has like 800 different attacks immobilization he breaks out of the wolf trap really easily so that's the tough part with it but there are certain bosses in which you can use this very effectively on conjunctivius is one of them because she's absolutely bodied by wolf trap the thing i gotta remember about kanji and wolf trap though is that she doesn't use her attack animations when she's trapped so you got to be very mindful of what she's going to be doing get a couple hits off but then get out of there because she could get the aura going she could get the dash going you got to be very very careful about kanji and the wolf trap mama tick is very weak to wolf trap uh completely unusable against giants so don't even bother with that timekeeper is very weak to root grenade and wolf trap as well but keep in mind what that when she's immobilized she can turn around and hit you make sure you take a shield with you what i do recommend for this is in biomes take something like a cudgel and i would say take something like a frontline shield or punishment for bosses i think this is a much better better survival weapon than it is a brutality weapon i don't think this really works in brutality i unless you run like a boy's axe with it but in survival i think it does work in a lot of situations i think it struggles in a lot of situations um but i think the proper rating for this one would be uh, that's tough I, i'm between a five or a six but let's be nice i'll give it a six oil sword so oil sword is a weapon i go back and forth on do i think it's one of the best in the game or do i think it's simply great it's a stupid discussion to have right but oil sword i do think is really good it does depend on fire though because otherwise it's not great because it's a little slow um but once you get fire i think it's great uh, it's awesome uh pair it with firebrands or pair it with the shield that gives you burn or take a flame turret or fire grenade or something that gives you poison and or not poison um burn you can also get something that gives you poison if you have the 80 percent of poison this can also do damage to burning and burning oil which is even more insane um you can dual bind it with something like the fire blast which turns into an awesome build i think this this one works great with combo as all of these weapons do but i think oil sort of especially works nice with combo because of the fact that you take combo and velocity and something like berserker or open wounds and then you should be able to run through like entire biomes just because of the fact that it's easy to use your firebrands you can dual bind it with your oil sword get a bunch of crits off move on to the next set of enemies move on move on move on and before that you clear the biome in like four minutes which i've done and it's really fun but at the same time it is kind of slow so you do need to be somewhat mindful against bosses but you're gonna be doing so much damage anyways that i don't think it matters Excuse me, something just got caught in my throat. Sorry about that. But yeah, I mean, Oil Sword, I do really, really like it. So uh, I, I think a 10 is appropriate for it. With the caveat that you do need fire. So would I say it's the best weapon in the game? No. Meat Skewer, I already said Meat Skewer was. But Oil Sword is definitely, you know, in the conversation. Rapier is up there with Meat Skewer, in my opinion. Because of that change to tactics. Meat Skewer is the best melee tactics weapon in the game, but it's not by a landslide. Rapier is actually a very, very close second. I think the change to tactics made it even better because you can pair it with Initiative and Predator, as you can with pretty much any melee, survive melee tactics weapon, but especially with Rapier because of the fact that you can roll and get crits. When you have that invisibility, you can roll behind an enemy, get even more crits. 
Oh, it's so good. So, so, so good. Um, I cannot believe that I kept this in the C tier in 1.4. Like, can you believe how stupid that was? I... This was a time when I hadn't used every weapon in the game and I kept using the same builds over and over again. And now that I branched out and I saw how good the rapier was, I, I look back and I cringe. And I may even look back on this and cringe that me putting the flint at a 2 was a stupid decision because the flint might end up being amazing. But uh, rapier, wow, so good. 10 out of 10. That's easy. Rhythm and Bazooki has the same problem that every melee survival weapon does but to a much lesser extent, and that's that boss battles are difficult. But the, the combo for Rhythm and Bazooki is really what you make it out to be, because you can get infinite crits on this, right? I think we all know that. If you time it right, you can pretty much get all crits. If you don't know how to do that, listen to Single Ladies by Beyonce, you'll be good to go from there, because it's the same timing as that song. So Rhythm and Bazooki, um, I think it works great in biomes. It can hit a lot of enemies at once. It's pretty fast for a melee survival weapon. I think this is the second fast or the third fastest one outside of seismic and broadsword. I don't think there's too many wrong, too much things wrong with it. It works in bro both brutality and in survival. Um, very versatile type of weapon. And yeah, it's the same problem in that how many combos are you really going to get off against bosses? But it is what you make it out to be, right? You don't have to get off ten combos in a row. You can get off a few and then roll to the next one because the crits are fast too and so you compare this with shield or you compare it with whatever you want and i think you're good to go from there so yeah this one 10 out of 10 too the next few are going to be 10 out of 10 i'm just spoiling this for you guys right now um, i'm trying to check if i have any more after this i have one more 10 out of 10 after the next three a lot of 10 out of 10s melee brutality survival is I'm mixing up my words. Anyway, say the stiletto. Obviously, I've said that this is the best weapon in the game before. I don't necessarily feel that way now because of one change that they did in 1.9 that I don't agree with, which was you can only get two dot synergies at a time. So you can only get bleeding and poisoning, and that's it. You can't get anything else with it. Or you can only get poison and burning oil. Those are the only two things you can get. So you kind of have to build according to that. Whereas with say the stiletto before, you get like five different dot synergies and then be able to smoke through everything. Fair enough, I, I get why the devs did it. I don't agree with it because I I like smoking through enemies. It's very satisfying to me, but um, it doesn't mean that Seda Stiletto is bad. It, it, it's still extremely good. Like, I actually think that it's gotten a lot better on melee tactics in 1.9. Let me explain why. Because early game, again, damage is difficult to come by. If you pair this with initiative and a knife and a throwing knife, you throw the throwing knife at an enemy, Seda Stiletto, against failed experiments you'll have them down to like 10 percent hp and then you just kill them with the second strike against runners it's a one hit ko against like bombardiers it's a one hit ko against slashers it's like a two hit ko it pairs so well with the throwing knife and with the carbine too but i think i like it better with the throwing knife because throwing knife is a little bit quicker and so you can fire it off and then you can use the stiletto from there and the stiletto speed is still fantastic melee tactics it's really really good and brutality it's always going to be good you know you got bloodthirsty shield you've got open wounds you've got same thing kunai and you've got the carbine and you've got a lot of different things such as cleaver uh, honestly I, I i love this weapon a lot 10 out of 10. uh next up seismic strike which you're going to be surprised that i put it at 10 out of 10 but it bodies elites like 90 percent of elites it bodies so uh, just because of the fact that if you roll behind them and then uh, start firing off on the seismic strike, they will literally never see you. And so you just keep hitting them and then they die. And surprisingly enough, it works in both brutality and in survival. You can pair this with the shield of your choice, or you don't have to pair it with the shield. You can pair it with the carbine used in brutality, immobilize a bunch of enemies, and you're good to go. In survival, if you don't want to run a shield, you can pair this with the nutcracker, and then you get a couple crits off, keep using the seismic strike, keep immobilizing enemies and bosses utility that's the name of the game with this weapon so if you can serve a utility function and an offensive function you're gonna rank really high on this list it doesn't matter what your base dps is you're gonna rank at least at a nine because versatility is so hard to come by with a singular weapon there's very few that serve multiple functions and seismic strike is one of them and if you can serve that utility well you're going to get a 10 and it serves a utility that it does extremely well so 10 out of 10 for me on that one Another 10 out of 10 is the shovel. So maybe I don't like hate melee survival as much as I do because I have three melee survival weapons in out of 10 and I have two out of nine. So maybe I just don't like flint. 
Shovel is really good. Um, he had absolutely walls hand of the king. It walls hammers. And it works against flying enemies too. Like, what more can you ask for? And it's fast. Like, what more can you ask for from this weapon? And to top it all off, it runs in both brutality and survival. It's utility and it's offensive. Same thing as the seismic strike. Easy 10 out of 10. Okay, we're done out of 10 out of 10s for a little bit. Shrapnel axes. It is a good weapon in theory until you use it and realize it's not powerful at all. It's one of those things where it's very versatile, but getting it to work is tough. And that's the thing, right? I did say earlier that if you can serve an offensive and utility function, you're going to rank really high on the list. And this is not an exception, but it's not going to rank as high because it doesn't do the offensive thing very well. It does the utility thing nicely, but not the offensive thing. So the utility, for those who don't know, is that it's both melee and range. So you can either get off Hunter's Instinct or you can get off Initiative or you can get open wounds. It just depends on what you're trying to do here. So I do think Shrapnel Axis depends on synergy more than most weapons just because of the fact that it, you do need that to be able to get that going off. So Balance Blade has a similar problem. A Balance Blade at least ramps up the damage after a very, very short time. Shrapnel Axis never ramps up the damage. So I do think that this weapon needs a critical hit. I don't know where you put it, but I do think it needs a critical hit. So I would give it a 7.5 out of 10. Now Spartan Sandals is not going to be a 10 out of 10, I'm very very sorry, but after I did the Spartan only run I have not touched it since and uh, I don't know when I'm going to touch it next because that was such a mentally draining run on me, having only a pair of sandals, and if you fought the 5BC boss you will understand why, but at hand of the king fight I tell you, if you knock him into spikes you better be prepared, but other than that, it's a really good weapon. I, I think it's vastly underrated by pretty much most people because of the fact that you can kick enemies and create separation. This is a support weapon. I, I think we gotta stop considering this like an actual, like real barn busting type of weapon. Like it's not, it's it's not a rapier. It's not a spike boots, which we'll talk about next. Um, it, this is a utility weapon. And so you gotta treat it like a utility weapon. You use it to create space, you use it with stuff like the Valmon Swip, you use it with stuff like Tentacle and with Impaler and whatever else you need to give you space. And side note, I do think this should be part tactics because of that. But, you know, if you take out the aspect of it needing to be your main weapon, it works really nicely. And because of that, I actually would give it an 8.5 out of 10. Because this and the Valmont Swip is a great combination. All you need to do is kick an enemy, use the Valmont Swip, and then they're dead. You pair it with open wounds, Spartan Sandals pushes the enemy and gives you bleed. 60% to bleed on the Valmont Swip, bam, they're dead instantly. It works not great against bosses, but Valmont Swip, you got Valmont Swip. So are you going to use your utility weapons all the time against bosses? No. And that's the same thing with the Spartan Sandals. Again, it's a pure utility weapon. So yeah, you can also yeet enemies off of ledges, but... How many times are you gonna get to do that throughout a run? Probably not many. Also, a body's mama tick, and a body's pretty much every elite in the game because you can just stun it against walls. So, yeah, that's also something it's got going for it. So, 8.5 out of 10, I think, is appropriate. Spiked boots. I hated the new animation, and then I loved it, and now I'm kind of, you know, I mostly like it, but I do think that it's kind of weird sometimes, just because of the fact that like. It's such a weird combo that like when enemies are attacking you, you don't know when you're going to be able to breach, which is stunning. You know, you don't know when you're going to be able to breach them. And because of that, I, I sometimes have a, I have difficulty knowing when to use it and when not to use it. So that's me though. That's my issue entirely. It has nothing to do with the weapon. That's just, that's wholeheartedly me. So um, I think this pair is great with pretty much everything as far as support is concerned, whether or not you're running a shield or whether or not you're running like a fire branch or something like that. But I, I do think it works well with a lot of different things. It's easily splashable. Uh, I would, this is a weird change, but I would actually make it a little bit slower, same animation, but it's slightly, slightly slower and make it part survival. I think it would serve really nicely as a survival weapon. But either way, I give it a nine. Spite sword. You either love it or you hate it or you understand both sides of the argument. I am one of those people. So the deal with Spite Sword is that it is sometimes a little bit of a pain to use because if you want to no hit bosses, you kind of have to take hits to get the crits off. And otherwise, the, the combo is not that great. So it's a weird weapon. Like 
Uh, when the devs did the survey, basically saying, oh, what's your favorite melee weapon? What's your favorite ranged weapon? Spikes are ranked near the bottom. So um, I understand people do like it. That's fine. Um, in order to get crits easily, all you need to do is hold up your shield. That's it. And you get crits for eight seconds. But again, if you want to no hit bosses, you can't do that. So kind of difficult. But there are ways in which you can get crits easily. You're going to get hit throughout your run. And it, again, it's a great curse ender suit too. So I, 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 I give it 7 out of 10. Honestly, 7 out of 10 I think is fine. A swift sword is a massively underrated weapon. Uh, people say it's not good against bosses. I don't believe that because it's still fast. And it still has a good combo. It has a good striking combo. And so it still works against bosses if you have synergy for it. Even that considered... It's kind of the same thing as the spike sword. Like, if you're okay taking damage against bosses, then you can run into spikes or whatever using Masochist, which gives you that 20% boost, and you can get crits from there. There are also affixes that give you small marginal speed boost if you get some hits off, and then you'll be able to get critical hits. There are ways to mitigate the boss problem with this weapon. So, um, this in Velocity is my favorite personal build in the game. It's what I have the most fun doing. I named my podcast after my swift sword runs which are all called chaos and chill so i mean i love it it's a great weapon 9.5 out of 10. symmetrical lands got a ton better a ton better in 1.9 it's got the same problem against bosses as a lot of melee survival weapons done but i would have given this like a three before but i think that small change of increasing its range has made it an absolute monster in biomes and i'm not even kidding it's so easy to get crits with this weapon now in biomes that you don't even need to bother running a shield sometimes. Like you can just, you can even run like an ice bow or a frost blast or whatever and then just freeze enemies and go to town with symmetrical lance because that range is so good. Like it covers half the screen. Like I am in love with this using it in biomes. Bosses is a different story, but you know, a lot of melee survival weapons struggle against bosses. At least it's faster, so it's like you don't struggle that much. Um, I do think it doesn't work great in brutality, but you can make it work. I think it works a lot better in survival. Obviously, most melee survival weapons work better in survival, but I do like this one. I, I love using it. Whether or not it's actually effective is a different story, so I think 7.5 is a good rating for this. Tentacle, I have a love-hate relationship with. Depending on the day, I'll either give it like a 4 or I'll give it like an 8. Um, so we'll cut it in the middle. We'll call it a 6. And the reason I don't like it sometimes is because it can struggle against bosses. But if you have the proper synergy, it actually works against bosses. The first episode of Chaos and Chill, which was at Monospite, I suggest you guys check that out because I love my podcast. Um, it did feature a tentacle run that was absolutely nutty. Um, I feel like I cleared entire biomes in like less than like five minutes. It was awesome. Uh, and I one hit Kanji, which is very difficult to do with that with this weapon. But if you run the right synergies, you can get a lot of productivity out of this. And it does a good job of clearing mobs if they're like bunched up together. Uh, I do think the struggles against smaller enemies. I really do think that if you can take on individual enemies just fine. But the problem is 4 and 5 BC and even 3 BC have a ton of mobs. And I guess even 2BC has a lot of mobs too, so just having those enemies like right next to you is just, it's difficult because it'll do that weird kick. Um, it, but that kick is meant for individual enemies instead of mob management. So I don't know. Uh, it, it's kind of tough to really give it a higher rating than a 6 though. Uh, Torch was great before, it got even better. I don't know why people didn't like it before, but yeah, it's always been good. I think it would be amazing if it got the burning oil affix, which I think that it should. I don't know why it doesn't, but it should. Um, I took a 300% torch in my normal mode run last week. Uh, that was so broken, it was hilarious. But I, I do really like the torch outside of that. You can you can run it in an oil build, it works fine. It works fantastic, honestly. It does a lot of damage, it's easily synergizable. You can splash it onto literally any brutality build. You can make this work. Um, I, I do, I'm a huge fan of this. Even if you want to use this as like an assistant to the oil sword, you can do that. Like, I don't know if you guys realize that you can run double melee builds. I did one on my last video, which was Meat Skewer and, and Valmont Sword. If two weapons synergize together, even if they're both melee, they'll still work together. Torch and oil sword is a good example. So you can even run that utility function. And running theme throughout this video, if you can serve in both an offensive and a utility function, it's gonna rank high on the list and it does both very well. 10 out of 10 for me. 
Twin daggers, I would like it if I didn't like it, and I would didn't and I would not like it if I liked it. That made zero sense. Uh six out of ten. He guys it does some good things, like that crit is really good. But the problem is that the first two hits are kind of irrelevant sometimes. Um, I think this would be a good two-handed weapon, and it's not just because uh, they are two daggers, although that is a big reason why. Um, but I do think that it does need a different sort of mechanic other than hit on the third strike. I think that's kind of boring, to be honest. I think there are better weapons than it, but I don't hate it. So I think 6 out of 10 is proper. Valmont Swip is going to be our last 10 out of 10 on this list. I love Valmon Swip. Uh, it's both fantastic in brutality and in tactics. Uh, I think that if you have range and you figured out how to use it, it's great. If you haven't figured out how to use it, you're not going to like it. But I do suggest you guys get used to this weapon because once you figure out that spacing, oh, it's it's fantastic. It's so good. And plus, if you have multiple in the crit range, I, I need to say this before I say the other thing. The crit range is bigger than you think. It's a small circle, right? So when you fire off the Valmont Swip, if you have a way of recording your footage, fire off the Valmont Swip, and then you'll see a little circle. And that entire circle is a crit area. So if there are enemies within that circle, all of them will be crits. And so I figured out that I figured that out some time back. I think back in like March. And ever since then, the crits I get on Valmont Swip is much more plentiful than it was before. So Valmont Swip, 10 out of 10. Vorpan is a interesting type of weapon because I actually don't think it's bad when it's not getting crits. It's not like Assassin's Dagger because Assassin's Dagger has a huge problem when you're not be when you're not able to crit enemies. Vorpan doesn't necessarily have that problem, but it is slower, so you got to consider that. I think that this is really good with a frontline shield because frontline shield boosts your melee damage, and as well, frontline shield also allows you to stay in front of an enemy while they attack and be able to counterattack with your Vorpan. So I do think that this is a really, really interesting weapon. I think it works well in a lot of different situations. Um, shit, let's just throw it out there. I think that this could be part survival too. Make, maybe make it a little bit slower and then make this part survival. I think it's got that potential. And I think about this, weapons that are used primarily with shields, I think have potential to be survival weapons. And I think this could be one of them. Mainly survival definitely does need more weapons. I will say that. Um, and I think Vorpan and the other one that I mentioned, I don't remember which, Spike Boots. Um, I think both of those could be survival weapons if you slow them down a little bit. And I think they can be effective on both playstyles too, because I'm trying to think, like, mainly survival needs more effective weapons in order to be able to run stuff like Heart of Ice and stuff. And I think these two would be good candidates. Now, if they don't do it, I don't really care, but I, I think that it would be interesting. And we've done a bunch of weapons in a row that was very positive. And we have two left, one I like, and one I absolutely loathe, and the War Spear. Oh boy, what do I say about this? Because when we talk about everything that I don't like about melee survival, the slowness, the ineffectiveness against bosses, the troubles with flying enemies, um, the difficulty in getting proper mutations associated with it, the reliance on the shield... Everything applies to the War Spear, but it's even worse considering the fact that it does a very trivial amount of damage against a singular enemy. So this is, in my opinion, the worst weapon in the entire game. If we consider ranged weapons and shields and skills, I think this is the worst weapon in the entire game. It is too slow to do any damage. At least Nutcracker, yeah, the damage is really bad if you don't have the crit condition on, but it's easy to get the crit condition on it. War Spear, it's not easy to get those crits, and it is unusable against the vast majority of bosses. No, all of them, because with bosses, like, the thing is that certain bosses will have multiple enemies on screen. Kanji, 5BC boss, and Hand of the King, right? They all have enemies on screen. So you can, you know, you can get the crits there, but you can't get crits ever against bosses, so... You can't, so you can't really take that many mutations, but you can't take something like Instinct the Master of Arms with you. So you need something like Hard Device to get that mutation cooldown. And even after that, how much damage are you realistically doing? You're not doing a lot. I've gotten one win with this weapon, and I, I went the most difficult route that I possibly could just to test it out. I went to Graveyards, I went to Cavern, I went to, um, uh, what was it, Giant, Hypey Castle, and that, this was before Graveyard Cavern was like my thing. 
it was my route that was before this so this was when i was trying to test it out and i just couldn't i could not use it i got the win somehow but i used my shield about 90 percent of the time by the end game so um this is a 1 out of 10 for me and i do apologize if you do like it and this is a 10 out of 10 for you i do again i need to emphasize everything that i say in this video is not a fact like this is 100 percent opinion based so if you don't agree then that's fine but i don't like this at all but to end the video on a high note because we are a positive channel and also this is the last weapon on my list because we did an alphabetical order the wrenching whip i do like it it is the red one as i like to call it because it's the worst whip but if the other two whips are 10 out of 10s this is gonna be by proxy be the worst whip the only reason it's a 9 out of 10 and not a 10 out of 10 because the first two whips are kind of weak and in an early game it can be kind of an issue but like once you get the synergy going which again is really easy with open wounds being a thing um you'll be able to get some significant damage off and even the first two whips will be able to do damage after that works great against bosses too because it's a fast combination people don't like the kick at the end because it doesn't have a lot of range but it has slightly more than you think because think about what you're doing right you're roping in enemies with the with the whip part and you kick them all with the kick so it's good i really like it it's a nine out of ten that is every single melee weapon my voice is exhausted from this one so i know that i ranked some stuff that you guys like pretty low like the flint and the giant killer and the war spear but i also probably ranked a lot of things that you guys wouldn't put up there such as the balance blade or the meat skewer so uh, either way you know uh if you don't agree with any of them totally cool leave a comment and here's the thing right if you don't agree with me and you think that i'm underrating a weapon let me know how that weapon is good because i do feel that every one weapon has a redemption arc associated with it and i feel like the symmetrical lance i hated it before it got better now it's really good so i think that every weapon has the chance of being redeemed so if you have any ideas on how to improve certain weapons you can leave a comment if i haven't used a weapon in a certain way that you think that i should try out leave a comment and i will absolutely try those out but either way we've got shields and skills coming up next and I hope you guys stay for that. And again, if you like the video, uh, please give it a like and subscribe for more Dead Cells content if you want. And I will see you guys later. Love you guys and be safe.